Greetings in Jesus name. This is Jacob Nainan from Bangalore, India. I am happy to bring you another message in the series Pointers Along the Way. These look at practical aspects of the Christian life and are sent out weekly, God willing, also through email, WhatsApp and Facebook. You can read all my previous messages as well as articles and books on my website called Comfort and Counsel at www.c-n-c.org May the Lord bless you as you read or listen. If you wish, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and also tell others about it. This is pointer number 838 and its title is Leaning on Ourselves. There is no doubt that Peter loved Jesus sincerely and was willing to obey him in everything. Peter said he was even willing to lay down his life for Jesus even if everyone else deserted Jesus. Matthew chapter 26 verses 33 and 35 But Peter said to him, Even though all may fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Peter said to him, Even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. All the disciples said the same thing too. This was why God was able to reveal to Peter the secret that Jesus was indeed the Son of God, the Messiah that Israel was waiting for. Matthew chapter 16 verses 16 and 17 Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. But like most people, he did not know the depth of the weakness of our flesh. Matthew chapter 26 verse 41 Keep watching and praying that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So when the temptation came, he fell miserably. The redeeming point was that when he fell, he wept bitterly in repentance. Verse 75 And Peter remembered the word which Jesus had said, Before a rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. He went on to lead the early church as an apostle. Moses felt that with all his Egyptian learning and princely training, he was going to deliver the people of Israel from slavery. He took matters into his own hands and went ahead, only to have to flee from Egypt and spend the next 40 years in a desert looking after sheep. But when he had finally lost all his confidence in himself, God was able to recall him to Egypt to actually be the deliverer. Jacob may have heard from his mother how God had chosen him over his elder brother Esau to carry on the family lineage. Without knowing God personally, he used his own scheming skills to usurp the birthright from Esau and get the blessing from his father through deceit. But years later he came to see his own helplessness without God, when he heard that Esau was coming towards him with armed men. Finally, he learned to place his entire confidence in God and God was able to bless him. Joseph was the favorite son of his father and when God gave him dreams to indicate the call he had on Joseph's life, he did not hesitate to tell his brothers and parents. It took 13 years of slavery and prison life to prepare him with humility so that when he was exalted in Egypt, he was able to deal with his brothers in a kind way. Psalm 105 verse 19 Until the time that his word came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. Paul, who used to boast of his Hebrew lineage, 
theological training and reputation as a Pharisee had to fall down as a persecutor, blasphemer and an associate with killing before he could truly bend down before the Lordship of Jesus the Christ. He became willing to count all things apart from Jesus as worthless. Philippians chapter 3 verse 7 But whatever things were gained to me, those things I have counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Have we learned this lesson in our own life? What is our boasting, if only within our own mind, if not before people? Is it our race, color, looks, family, education, wealth, social status, etc. that makes us think we are special? Have we learned that without Christ, we can do nothing? John chapter 15 verse 5 I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Without the anointing of the Holy Spirit, we can't touch anyone deeply or do any work for God, however much knowledge or natural skills we have. God does not want us to think up new ideas and do many things for Him, but to do just what He wants. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2, The Living Bible Now, the most important thing about a servant is is that he does just what his master tells him to do. Have we come to the place of brokenness before God in our own eyes, that we cling to God for leading and anointing for his work to be done through us, according to his will, by his strength, and for his glory? Romans chapter 11, verse 36. For from him, and through him, and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you in your life as you have listened to these words. Thank you.